dried chickpeas. But sometimes you just don't think to soak them ahead of time. So you could use either. I, for a long time, just used regular um, canned chickpeas. And that was just sort of my go-to. And then I started using dried chickpeas when I, when I thought of it. Um, I have a friend who likes to, to sort of roast his, his canned chickpeas to dry them out. So they're sort of halfway between canned and dried. And he roasts them in the oven. You could do them in a skillet, just like you were doing fried chickpeas, and just dry them out a little bit. And that is faster than, than pre-soaking them. If you have dry chickpeas, you want to soak them for like 24 hours or, or overnight, but then they're not cooked, they're just soaked. Does that, does that make sense? Um, when it comes to dried, dried beans and dried peas, sometimes people have a hard time with them not, not getting soft. If you add a little bit of baking soda to your, your soaking liquid, that will help things along. Um, and so I had an email from somebody this week who was making a soup and she had soaked her chickpeas and then they were supposed to cook in the soup, but the soup had a uh, tomato base and that acid can keep your, your beans from cooking. So for example, if you're making baked beans and there's vinegar in the sauce, you wanna make sure the beans are cooked all the way through before they go into the sauce because they're not gonna get softer in that, in that acid. Acidic environment. Okay, I tend to go off on tangents all the time. Mike is laughing because I do this all the time. Like we're supposed to talk about falafel, now I'm talking about baked beans. But it's related. And I know the, the co-op social media um, people, Amber, is it you on social media? She's like, give lots of tips. So I may be, I may be like doing lots of tips and giving lots of tips. It's just the random when I think of them. Okay, so this is how I make falafel. I sent you guys a recipe. Um, because I know people like recipes. How many of you follow a recipe exactly? Uh, yeah, and, uh, if you're baking, right? I know a lot of you are like, if it's baking, it's more sciencey. It's usually about a third of people like having a recipe to follow, and that's fine. This is one of those recipes that you don't really need to follow exactly. You can sort of add things to your mixer. If you like garlic, add more garlic. If you like um, Lemon, you could add some lemon to your to, to the mix. If you like cumin a lot or if you like it spicy, you could add more um, more chilies. I just add things to the blender and pulse until I have a mixture that holds together. I'm gonna do half canned, half dry because I have both and I can't decide. So the one thing that I hear from people often, um, not often, I occasionally hear from people is that their falafel falls apart and that sounds like it's more common with, with canned chickpea falafel. Um, so that's one thing that I've never had happen, but I've, I hear people have that happen. It could be the baking powder. Sometimes people put too much baking powder and it kind of lightens the mixture. There's so much activity. You guys are cooking already. Um, so, so yeah, if that has happened to you, it could be that you use canned chickpeas and it could be that there was too much baking powder. Sometimes I don't use the baking powder at all. The baking powder lightens the mixture a bit. Okay, so I am going to uh, chop up some onion. Purple onion is nice and mild. A shallot uh, is nice. It's a, it's a good quantity. I think I said a half a small onion. If you have green onions, you know, if you have onions in the garden, whatever form of onion you have. I know we're not running to the grocery store very often right now. So we tried to make these recipes um, very flexible in terms of using what you have. Dried beans, of course, canned beans too, but dried beans are really um, shelf stable. They're both shelf stable. So you can just have them on hand and rehydrate them whenever you need them. So a little bit of onion, uh, some garlic, of course, a clove or two, depending on how strong your garlic is. If you have some of that really potent red Russian Alberta garlic, sometimes a clove is like the size of a whole head of uh, other varieties of garlic. So, you know, use your judgment. Um, I like garlic, so I'm gonna add a few cloves. And I just throw them directly into the pot. Actually, while I'm at it with the, with the garlic, I'm going to make my garlic yogurt because I like it to sit for a little bit. Now, I just put in the recipe tzatziki, um, whatever kind of sauce you like. I, I like garlicky yogurt, which is essentially tzatziki without the cucumber. Um, just plain yogurt, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt, put some olive oil in there, some olive oil in there. Any questions yet, Paula? 
I see the chat has lots of comments. Hi, Julie. There's a question about can you use a two two different questions. Can you use a blender instead of a food processor? And can you use dried parsley parsley instead of fresh parsley? Um, dried parsley doesn't have a lot of flavor. So I don't know if I would bother with dry parsley. I think the parsley in the recipe is for the salad. You could put parsley in the falafel itself. I like using cilantro because I love cilantro. But if you don't love cilantro, you could use parsley, you could use mint. Um, dry parsley just doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. So you would use it sort of as a garnish. I don't know if I would bother. And sorry, what was the other question? About using a blender instead of oh, a food a processor. You can, if you have a good blender, you totally can. You're just gonna have to scrape down the sides of the, of the blender um, a lot because of the size of it, because of the shape of it. Um, but yeah, somebody messaged me maybe on Instagram saying she didn't have a food processor. Uh, no, you had a small, who was it? You had a small food processor. So you may have to do it in batches. It's really just the chickpeas that you need to grind up. Everything else you can finely chop and, and, uh, and sort of mix together. You just want to make sure that it has a consistency that you can shape into balls or patties. Ooh, look at Wayne. I can even see your blender. That's so impressive. He's already, he's like way ahead of me. Okay, so while, while I have garlicky hands, um, I'm going to grate a clove into, these are like really funny shaped garlic cloves. So did you see how I peel the garlic? Oh, sorry, were you closed up and I moved? This is how I, this is how I peel garlic. Take a clove off. This is like a really papery head of garlic. Look at this. Cut off the stem end and then I just bash it with the put the your knife blade on it and just smash it and I do olives the same way just smash them and pull out the pits so for the garlicky yogurt and this you can just keep in the fridge if you make a lot of like roasted vegetables or a lot of falafel um, it'll keep in the fridge for, for a long time and Julie, they're wondering if you can just speak up a little bit more so we can get a better audio from you. Oh, you can't hear me? How do you it's know just, they can It's just slow. There you go. <laughs> they, there's two mics here monitoring me. You can't, can, am I better now? Am I mumbling? Is it my sound? Is it me or is it you? That is perfect now. Thank Turn you. Turn it up. Am I better? It's great. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. I will, I will enunciate and Mike turned it up. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So a uh, little bit of salt only if you want it to taste good. Otherwise don't worry about it. I can tell you guys are laughing, even though I can't hear you. Um, so yeah, just mix up a little bit of lemon is good in your, in your yogurt. Sometimes I just do garlic and salt in plain yogurt and that's it. Um, but if you have some lemon, it's good. Like I said, some olive oil is good. If you have tahini, tahini is really great. Um, any ratio of tahini to yogurt, to garlic, salt, lemon, you, you don't have to measure it. If you like it more um, tahini heavy, you know, just use a little bit of, of yogurt and a lot of tahini. Um, if you like just a little bit of tahini and a lot of yogurt, it doesn't matter. Um, but the longer it sits, the better flavor it's gonna have. So if I wanna turn this into tzatziki, I would grate some cucumber and squeeze it out. I usually grate it right onto paper towel with the core side of a box grater and then just wring it out, get that juice, the, the extra juice so it's not watery because I like a thick tzatziki. Any questions? Look at all the activity. No, no, Susan's good. Uh, can they use sour cream if they don't have plain yogurt? If you don't have plain yogurt? Um, then you don't have to, you don't have to have a sauce for it. This is just an, an optional sauce. Um, you could probably use like sour cream or creme fraiche. Any, any thick dairy product is good in my books. Okay. So some of you are already uh, way ahead of me. I'm going to put some spices in some cumin and uh, some, I'll need some salt in, in here as well. This looks like a big pinch. This is kosher salt, which isn't as salty as table salt. Um, and you can always, you know, taste and adjust 
as you go, a little bit of cumin. I'm gonna put a pinch of chili flakes or you could put some hot sauce in there. And then there's a bit of flour um, that just kind of helps bind it together and, and absorbs any extra liquid. It's not completely necessary if you wanna use gluten-free flour, you can. Um, I've left it out entirely and it's been okay. And, and cilantro I love. So I usually chop the stems. The stems just have more water in them, but they have all the flavor of the, of the leaves. So don't throw out the stems. Usually when I have a bunch of cilantro like this, I chop from the stem end and throw it into like my curries or stews or whatever I'm, I'm cooking or my falafel. And then I use the leaf, the leaf end, the leafy end for um, the tops to you know, throw a little cilantro on, on top of whatever it is I'm making. So either, you can use either end, but since I'm grinding it up anyway, I'm just gonna use the stem ends and, and however much you like. I'm gonna add more um, because I love it. Okay, did I forget anything? Spices, flour, salt, uh, garlic, onion, cilantro. I've got this turned around backwards and then I'm gonna pulse it until it's finely ground and I can squeeze it together. So canned chickpeas will give you sort of a softer. Uh, hi, Julie, a couple of people are wondering if you can just review the ingredient amounts really quickly. Oh, sure. So two cups of, of canned chickpeas is a large, one of the standard large cans of chickpeas. Um, or two cups if you're soaking them or if you've, simmer them yourself you can soak your chickpeas and, and use cooked you know cooked from dry chickpeas um and then you want i'm gonna grab the spatula i have a spatula i'll use this i'll use a spoon uh then you want like half a small onion or a shallot is about the size of a half a small onion a couple garlic cloves about a quarter cup of um, chopped cilantro, if you like cilantro, otherwise leave it out. Uh, I'm looking at my recipe to make sure I have, I'm telling you the same thing I told you before. Teaspoon of cumin, a pinch of dried chili flakes, a couple tablespoons of flour. Um, and that, you can adjust it. If it looks really wet, it's not sticking together, you can add more flour. If it looks like it's holding together and you don't wanna add flour, don't add the flour. Oh, a little bit of baking powder. I don't think I added the baking powder, which isn't necessary, but it'll lighten the mixture a little bit. Um, and that's it. If there's anything else that you like that you think would taste good in there, if you like mint, um, that would be good. And blend it until you don't have any, you know, whole chickpeas left in there. <laughs> I went backwards. I'm used to having the button toward me, but there we go. Ashley, you're making dinner with a baby strap to you. That's so impressive. I used to do that for about four months until he was so big. Hi, what's his name? You can unmute yourself. I can see the like, where's the mute button? Oh, he's so sweet. So, can you zoom up with that fancy camera? You can see that it will hold together. You can tell us in the chat, you have an extra arm to just type, right? <laughs> you can shape it into a ball if you like. Um, I like to shape them into little patties, then you don't need quite as much oil. And you can kind of shallow cook them on the stove top. Huh? Huh? Little patty, falafel. If I wasn't doing all that talking, that would be so fast. So generally what I do, I'm just gonna, wash my hands in my sink of soapy water here. Normally what I do is I kind of I get my, my skillet going and I shape the mixture straight from the food processor into the pan. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move my skillet over so you can see. Is anyone cooking yet?
I see some people at the stove. I see a lot of movement and and gestures that suggest cooking. Madison is cooking them. I can see her. Okay, I'm gonna move this around here. Oops, I just unplugged myself. Where's the cord? There we go. Okay, I want you guys to be able to see. So you can use a skillet or you can use a pot, like a shallow pot. Oh, sorry, that's the induction burner. I thought I'd use a skillet so it was easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Get all this garlic paper. Woo! Um, you could do a skillet, with a, a skillet with a shallow amount of oil, or you could do a pot. If you want to submerge them, you totally can. Um, you don't need to use that much oil. If you want to bake them, you can. If you want to use your air fryer, you can. They're a little bit drier in the air fryer. They aren't quite as crispy, um, but they're actually not bad. I gave it a try. So I like doing it in oil. This is canola oil. Any kind of neutral vegetable oil is fine. This looks like a lot, but it's like probably a quarter of an inch, maybe a third of an inch. Um, and that way I can cook them on one side and then flip them. My house is so wonky that it's actually twice as deep on one side as the other side. This is how crooked our house is. I had a jello mold at Christmas. Remember when we had Christmas parties a few years ago? Maybe it was two years ago. I don't know. It feels like 10 years, years ago. There was a, there was a jello mold someone brought on the plate on the on the kitchen counter and it kept sliding off it was like it was trying to escape and I kept pushing it back on and then I come back and it was like off the have I told this story before okay so oil you want your oil hot hot pan plus hot oil equals no sticking did you get that amber <laughs> um, cast iron is great too I have a, a big cast iron pan that just lives on my stove top. Um, so yeah, heat up your, your oil and then you can shape your falafel into little patties. And Shelly, for oil, can it be canola, olive oil? What's the best bet? Yeah, canola, canola is what, what I use. Any kind of mild vegetable oil, um, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil. Um, olive oil is okay. It's got a lower smoke point and it might, um, it'll add more flavor to your, your falafel. Canola is just my go-to for everything, for frying, for sauteing, for baking. Um, it's nice and neutral. It's got a high smoke point. It grows in Alberta and, um, and it's inexpensive. So yeah, that's what I would use. But anything that's labeled vegetable oil, Okay, so I always forget how powerful this, this uh, skillet is. So it's hot. You know, my, my aunt, my Belgian aunt, would put the handle of her wooden spoon. It's kind of shallow, so you can't. Oh, maybe you can see. She put the handle of her wooden spoon in the oil, and when it bubbled around it, it was ready to go. And she made her croquettes. So you want to be gentle and not you don't want it to splash so you can use tongs or a slotted spoon if you like oh i can smell the garlic That's some potent garlic Whew. you could use roasted garlic so here's another tip um, if you have a lot of really good garlic and you want to preserve it just break the head apart into cloves and i like to peel the cloves but you can leave them in their skins Put them in a pot and cover them with oil. Olive oil is really nice, but it could be any kind of oil. And just bring it to a bare, bare simmer. So you're sort of poaching. You're making a, a confit, garlic confit. Um, so this bare simmer and the, the garlic will soften and it'll turn really, really pale golden. And then you can cool it and you can keep it in a jar in the fridge and it keeps because it's, it's cooked. Um, and, and it's nice and soft and then the garlic infuses the oil that it's in so you can kind of 
scoop out some of the oil and some of the mashed garlic and just add it to whatever. And it's really mellow because it's, it's cooked. It's like roasted garlic, but also garlicky oil. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially in the late summer when you have all that really great garlic. Okay, so these are gonna get nice and golden and crispy and I'm gonna flip them over. And maybe I'll make, I'm gonna make some um, dressing for our salad because I, I rarely buy dressing. There's only a couple kinds of dressing. There's, okay, there's one kind that I, I'm completely hooked, hooked on and uh, co-op started carrying it a couple of years ago. I was super excited. This is my favorite. I've never been able to recreate it. It's from the Okanagan, Little Creek. Do you guys know this? So good. It's actually really good on this sort of tomato and romaine salad that I'm gonna make. Um, but balsamic is a little bit more um, common. I figured that would be something that a lot of people might have. And it's really easy to make if you have balsamic vinegar and um, olive oil. So these are cooking. I don't have my hood fan above me, so I'm not gonna get it cranked up too high. Um, sometimes I make flatbread. I thought it would might be a little bit much if I had flatbread in the recipe as well, but uh, flatbread like, you know, like a soft, almost like naan um, to wrap around the falafel is so good or pitas, just get some fresh pitas. But I just like to eat them on their own or, you know, with a salad and with that garlicky yogurt. Any other questions? Are you guys just too busy just, to have any questions? Just any tips that close up is great, Julie. Uh, just tips about if the mixture feels wet and also the kind of the thickness of the patties and of, uh, of the oil, how much oil in the pan. Any tips okay, there? Here, I'll show you. I'll show you a close up of the patty. I'm going to shape another one, and the oil comes up about about halfway um, as they're cooking. So here, I'll show you again. Mike's going to zoom in. So I'm shaping about a golf ball size. They can be smaller, um, about a golf ball size, and then. I flatten it. So it's probably three quarters of an inch, I would say. That's how I make them. But you know, people make them in different ways. Sometimes they're kind of more tapered on the edges. If you, you know, want to make sure that they are crispier, make them a little bit smaller. Huh? I need like something for comparison, like a banana or something. <laughs> Banana for scale. Um, yeah, and about a half an inch of oil I've got in the skillet. So it's coming up as it kind of bubbles around them. It comes about halfway up the side of um, the falafel. So this is what it will look like. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's golden on both sides. And any tips if they're falling apart in the pan? So if they're falling apart, I would add a little bit of flour, um, maybe blend them again. Maybe they're just not finely uh, blended enough. You're not able to squeeze it together. So if you can, if you have mixture still in your, in your food processor, your blender, just pulse it a little bit more, um, add a little bit of flour, especially if they're wet, if it's really wet, because um, you want to drain the, the chickpeas before you blend them. Um, Add a bit of flour and that'll absorb some of the moisture. Does that help? And if you have some bits falling off, that's okay. If they're completely disintegrating, that's not okay, but it actually might still be delicious. You might get lots of crispy bits. You can sprinkle them over your salad and call it um, like falafel croutons and pretend you meant for it to be that way. That's what Julia Child always did, right? Never apologize. Um, but yeah, and it could be uh, baking powder, maybe omit the baking powder next time. Um, I've never had them fall apart like I, I hear people say they completely disintegrate. So I would, can I see if, if, who's asking? If, can you show me a visual? 
Oh, the edge just fell off that one just to show me up. Mm. You also want to be gentle with them. You don't want to, you know, agitate them too much. So once when you put them in a hot pan, give them some time to just sit and don't start poking at them for a while. Um, and that way they'll have a chance to develop a nice crust and they'll, they'll be more structurally, structurally sound. Whoops. If that makes sense. Does anyone have some successful looking falafel they want to share? Okay. If you have bits in the bottom, you can just scoop them out. Let's see, let's see your falafel. Oh, nice, Laura. Those are beautiful. Oh, those are perfect. Yeah, and if they're really flat, you get more, more surface area. Oh, nice, Madison, nice. I gotta scroll through. I gotta scroll through and see some, I'm just gonna go around. Can I go around? Can I approach the laptop? I'm gonna be able to see more. Oh, it's not letting me move through. Hmm. Well, I can see a lot of them and they look amazing. And I see some of you are still cooking them. Oh, nice. Michelle, nice. Yeah, those are great. I love how like you guys have, some of you made them nice and flat. Oh my gosh. You know what I was doing? I was touching the screen instead of the curse. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I'm glad I have a real professional here. I was touching the screen like it was an iPad. Oh my gosh. You guys are laughing, let's see. Okay, I can see some of you were just holding them up and I missed them. Holly, were you holding them up? Marie, nice. Those are awesome. Hannah and Jennifer, let's see. Let's see. Oh, they're moving the camera down. I love it. Oh, you guys are on the salad already. Nice. Well done. Oh, Louis. Louis Chang, am I saying your name right? Louis or Louis? My, our dog was named Louis or Louis, spelt like that. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it again. What is wrong with me? I keep touching the screen. Okay. Oh, these look great, you guys. Oh, Chantel's. Mixer is nice and pale green. Marianne. I love that some of you are, are cooking like, oh, 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 Anna Rose, nice. Oh, Riley, beautiful. Those look great. Oh, Marsha, Danielle, nice. Kate, Holly, oh, you guys, you all pass. Um, yeah, I love that some of you are cooking like on a beach. <laughs> so with the background, right? Okay, I'm not going to cook anymore because you're you have you're on the ball with this. So I'm going to move this out of the way. We've got some of our falafel, and that that mixture. By the way, if you don't want to cook all your falafel at once, because I know a lot of us are at home, you know, with one or two people, and you're not cooking for four to six. It's, it drives some people crazy that most recipes are scaled for four to six. You can keep the mixture in your fridge and just, you know, dip into it and cook a few because they're always best when they're freshly cooked. Flawful, just they never taste quite the same the next day, you know, when they're when they're cooked and then they're in the fridge, they get that kind of paper towel texture. Okay, so now we're going to make a fatouche salad. I'm all, oh, I missed one. I missed one little guy. I am. Um, I'm also the messiest cook. Like, honestly, I don't know how I make such a mess every time I cook. Okay, so we're gonna make a quick dressing. This is the closest jar that I had. This is like a restaurant supply store syrup container, but I use it for salad dressing. And uh, I'm gonna just make some quick balsamic vinaigrette. So a classic vinaigrette is about four to one uh, vinegar or acid, it could be lemon juice. 
um, to oil. And it could be olive oil, it could be canola oil, it could be um, is it avocado oil. I would use a more neutral oil for the bulk of it. If you're using a stronger oil, like a nut oil even, can, can be strong. So about four to one, and it's easy to see because it separates, right? Kids, I know there's a lot of kids watching. You can do this, you can just eyeball it. And, uh, and it's cool, it's kind of like a lava lamp. But we want it to emulsify, we want it to hold together and stay together once we shake it up. So we're gonna add some mustard, a little bit of grainy mustard, just because it's what I have. I always have grainy mustard, some salt, salt and pepper is good. Um, garlic, because garlic is also amazing. I like to grate my garlic with my microplane, which I think I put it in the sink, I did. The microplane makes it really, really fine. If you have a good um, garlic press, you just want it to be really, really fine when it's going into dressing. No, oh, let's keep this for the salad. Julie, can you read for our viewers the ratio of oil to vinegar? Is it four to one oil to vinegar or vinegar to oil? Can you just four to one? Help? Four to one oil to more, You want more oil than vinegar? More oil than vinegar. Perfect. Yeah. So it's about a, yeah, about a quarter. If you like it more vinegary, you can add more vinegar. I actually really like vinegar. Um, so I usually do closer to three to one, but four to one is kind of more classic. So it doesn't have to be precise. You don't have to be, you know, super exact. You can just eyeball it. A um, little bit of garlic. Sometimes I just throw the whole clove of garlic in the dressing and just it just kind of bobs around in the in the bottle and you know you can kind of pour it off and the, and the garlic stays in the in the bottle so it infuses it um so what i just do is peel it and smash it so it kind of breaks open and flavors the the whole bottle okay and i've got some tomatoes which are um not you know at the height of their season, but that's okay. We still have some good grape tomatoes here. Oh, cilantro would be great. Pita, so in a fatouche salad, it's usually very herby, um, lots of fresh parsley and cilantro, and then toasted pita. So you can toast your pita. If you have a gas stove, you can toast it right on your stove top. Just put your pita on and turn on the flame. Uh, you can put it in the oven if your oven is on, put it in the toaster oven. And, uh, and it's like crunchy croutons. Let's make a bed of lettuce first. I kind of went about this backwards. Okay. I mean, it's a salad, right? How's everyone doing? No one's, is anyone stressing out? I don't see any smoke. This is good. There's a question about if you were just to back up a step um, to bake your falafel instead of frying, if that's an option. Yeah, you can bake your falafel. Yep. Just put it on a baking sheet, bake it at about like 400. Um, drizzle it with oil if you like. Oil will just make it crispier on the outside. And if you want to do it in the air fryer, um, you can just do it. An air fryer is just a little tiny convection oven. So sort of the same thing as your oven. Um, and this, it circulates the air, so it's, it, it dries out the surface of your food, which is great for making things crispy. Um, but yeah, just put it in the oven, put it on a baking sheet, drizzle with oil if you like, and um, probably 15 minutes, just like roasting vegetables, um, maybe a bit longer. I like my roasting thing, my, you know, roasted, whatever I'm roasting to be nice and, nice and roasted. If that makes sense until they're nice and golden and they won't be as crispy as the hot oil oil is such a great um, heat conduit and it covers the surface it gets every little like craggy bit it's a little bit more efficient than than air so it'll make your falafel more crispy and 
you know, canola and other oils are typically the kinds of fats that we want in our diet. So um, we all need some fat, right? Okay, I've got a big tomato, some grape tomatoes, just however you want to chop them. I kind of make like making rough um, chunks. And more broken pita and then lots of herbs, tons of herbs. So I'm going to use some cilantro and some parsley, flat leaf parsley or curly parsley, whichever you happen to have, if you have it. We'll just get the leafy part of the, the parsley stems aren't quite as, they're a little bit tougher than cilantro stems. Um, so I typically, you could use them for stock, but I typically don't use those stems. I just compost them. Um, and then you just roughly chop the, the leaves or tear them. Oh, I always do this. <laughs> Thank you. Let's cover up my microphone with my towel. It's like a habit in, in the kitchen. Who else does that in the kitchen? Puts their towel over their shoulder. So I love cilantro and salad. So this is where the leafy part of the cilantro is useful. Ta-da! Okay, and our dressing, which I just abandoned. Okay, so I put garlic and garlic and mustard. If you want to put a little bit of sweetener in there, um, like honey or maple syrup, it's delicious. I'm gonna put a little bit of honey in here. I've got some honey from my neighbors actually. I have all these neighbors who have bees and so they give me honey, which is great. How's everyone doing? Good. I like the thumbs up. It's so funny seeing so much activity and not hearing any of it. So just a little bit of honey. If you like, you don't need it. Um, and the mustard will help it emulsify. Holly, you guys are eating already. Nice. I love it. It's cool that we're, we're kind of like we're eating together. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's open. <laughs> okay, make sure your bottle is closed before you shake it. <laughs> this is why on TV they have like editors. Usually I use this for syrup. Do you want a tip about syrup? Which is completely unrelated to falafel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> you got to do the cameraman nod. Oh man, it's on my face. Okay, so, oh, I forgot the cucumber. Um, my son eats a lot of pancakes and waffles, which I know some of your, your parents can probably relate to. Wow, well, I'm covered with dressing right now. <laughs> um, and when we run out of syrup, you can make your own pancake syrup by simmering two to one brown sugar to water. And you just bring it to a simmer. I mean, cook it for maybe a minute, but as soon as it's boiling, it's fine. Take it off the heat. And when it cools, it's um, the consistency of, of pancake syrup. And you can add some vanilla or you can add maple extract. It's actually really good with vanilla. Um, <clears throat> and it keeps in the fridge because it's syrup, it'll keep for a long time. Cucumber. And then we'll drizzle it with dressing since I've already dressed myself. I like putting salad on a plate. I've totally overloaded this plate um, or a platter. I didn't leave any room for my falafel. Here, we'll tuck the falafel on the side. I'm gonna eat this. You guys are already eating. 
Man, I have envy of some of your kitchens. Okay, so usually what I do is I do like a platter and I put the waffle on the side. I did not leave any room for it. And then we have this garlicky yogurt that we can drizzle over top. Any, any questions? How to get oil out of your shirt? Does anybody know? Because what if the falafel was cooked on the outside but still soft and moist on the inside? Would that be an oil temperature? It should be soft on the inside. It should be crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. You could, if it's if it's cooking too quickly, then it can get really crispy on the outside and not cooked through, but they're chickpeas, so they're already cooked. Um, so if you wanna cook them longer, just turn your oil down a bit, or you can throw them in the oven if you wanna heat them through more. Does that help? But they should be soft in the middle. And you're getting some tips of either um, dish soap, Dawn dish soap, or <laughs> shampoo for oil stains. For my shirt? Thank you. I haven't used this for dressing for a long time, but all my jars are underneath like a coffee machine and some stuff over there. So I was like, oh, I'll just use this. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna scroll through again so I can see. Nice. And I love how some of, oh, Wayne, nice. I love how, oh, Heather, beautiful. I can't, oh, they're just in front of the camera. I couldn't tell if you're holding. Kim and Aubrey, have, oh, Kim. So, wow, yours, that's one that fell apart, hey? Kim, <laughs> what happened? Are they can't, were they canned chickpeas? And did you use a lot of baby? You guys are both nodding. Did they, does it taste good? Did the crumbs taste good? <laughs> did they all fall apart? Really? That's so interesting. I've never had that. But occasionally, see, look at Heather's. Look at Heather's right underneath you. Okay, so is the oil hot when you're putting them in? I mean, I'm sure you're doing it right. It must be, I wonder if it's the brand of chickpeas or something. Like, if there's something that reacts to the baking powder? Blue label? So it's like the no salt blue label. Sorry, I'm super close to the camera right now. Um, yeah, I have never had that happen. Okay, well, okay, I'm gonna go and buy, okay, you got, okay, baking powder. No, this is good, this is helpful. I wanna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna go and buy those brands and make it and see if, see what happens. Cause I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening because it looks like they're just completely exploding. That's so interesting. And it, but it shows you how like there are so many variables. <laughs> Mike's got my kitchen light shining at me. That when you're writing recipes, like th these things can just come up and kind of throw you off, which is usually why we when we write recipes, um, why us recipe writers, we go for doneness indicators and all these sort of descriptors, but then something happens like this and they just completely fall apart and the mystery. I bet you there's something in the in the processing. There's got to be that's reacting with the baking soda. That's got to be it. Do you have like, is there an ingredient list on the can? Is there something in there that's not? I don't think I have any cans of chickpeas. Did, has anyone else's fallen apart? Marianne. Did yours fall apart? Jessica, did yours fall apart? Mm. Jessica, mm, not quite, but a little bit. What kind of chickpeas? Oh, where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Uh, but they're kind of together. They're just like not. Can she unmute? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're not perfect looking, are they? 
Do they taste good? Do they taste good, Jessica? Yeah. You have a drink, so that's okay. Okay, so two of you, but they look completely different, right? Oh my gosh, I have salad dressing in my hair. It's a good conditioner. Balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, that looks nice, Louie. Okay, Unico chickpea success. We should do like a comparison of the different brands. Tina, how are yours? You have a lot of activity, are they good? So interesting, okay. Michelle, those look great. You guys are just eating away. Linda, how do yours look? Peter, oh, Peter's are nice. Those are nice, cool. Charmies, oh, they look perfect. Oh, I just got a view of myself. Not used to seeing myself from that angle. Okay, um, any other questions? Shall we wrap up? I just realized it's been an hour already. Uh, just any, any tips, other, other tips for toasting the pitas? I know you mentioned the stove, but if you have any other tips and uh, it looks like adding trial and error with the flour seems to have been a good result for people on their second hey, tries. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Gibsons. Hi, I see all of you waving. How's your dinner? Awesome. Yay, that's what I liked here. Um, toasting the pitas, like you could do it in the toaster. If you tore your pita in half, you could do it in the toaster. Toaster oven uh, in the oven. I just had my oven on earlier for something else. So I threw the pita in just to toast um, or just on the, the flame on your gas stove. Just put it right on just for a few seconds because it's really um, intense heat. Just until they're toasted. Does that help? Or in Calgary, you could just leave them out. Oh, Wayne, did you make your own pitas, Wayne? Nice. You did. Nice. Those are amazing. Yeah, I love a good soft flatbread with falafel. Those are beautiful. That's great. Well, you guys all seem to be eating now. Oh, Kelly, those look good. Shall we, um, shall we wrap up? Oh, oh, Grace, that looks amazing. Grace, I see it. I couldn't see your name because it was underneath the, oh, yours are more like balls, hey? Those are great. Those are awesome. Looks so good. Peter, that looks so good. I love that we're kind of all eating the same meal together, except for, was it Heather? Who's, who's exploded? Was it Heather? Sorry about your exploded falafel. Cindy, oh, that looks really good. Oh, and you purple onion. I forgot the purple onion. I have it. I got it. Oh, here it is. It escaped. Yes, the purple onion on your salad. Some feta would be really good in this salad too. But we're trying to go for sort of under $20. So, you know, feta is a little bit pricier. Hey, Arden. Arden, yes. Are you... She's pointing. I thought you were giving the thumbs down, but not the, okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Love it. Jen and Aubrey, are you showing us? Is yours done? Oh no, you're the ones that exploded. It wasn't Heather. <laughs> so you'll be having salad for dinner with crispy bits, a crispy sprinkle, like a salad sprinkle, right? Falafel salad sprinkle. Just, it's all in the presentation. <laughs> Crispy falafel salad. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and get that brand. Was it the no salt? It was the blue. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I, I will solve this mystery. Well, thanks so much, Julie. Um, I just read a comment that uh, people feel like you're in their kitchens with them, which I think the whole city needs right now. So thank you again for a great meal. Well, and I feel like you're all in my kitchen with me. So thank you. Because I have a 15 year old who kind of comes down and grunts and then 
looks in the fridge and then goes back upstairs. <laughs> so thank you. It's a good thing I'm not in your kitchen because if I was, your kitchen would be covered with salad dressing right now. <laughs> I smell like balsamic. I just showered. Um, so thanks you guys, thanks for joining us. And the next one is bulgogi beef, I believe, with citrus possets, which is one of my favorite desserts and also one of the easiest. So that'll be a fun one and an another quick one that we can do in real time. So I'm gonna cook the rest of these falafel for Mike to take home. Mm -hmm. He's doing, oh, look, he's doing the cameraman nod. Uh -huh. So thanks for joining us. And, and they're also gonna edit it and put it up on, uh, on YouTube so you can refer back. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks guys. Thanks. And Kim and Aubrey. It's Kim and Aubrey. Wah, wah. Sorry. <laughs> wah, wah. Sad trombone. Um, thanks for joining us, though. And thanks for smiling through it, even though you have exploded falafel. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well, we'll see you next time. Enjoy your dinners. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. And sorry, I keep looking at this laptop instead of the camera. It's a good thing it's close. Bye, bye.